you're watching my review on the real housewives of Sweet Valley High. This is exactly what the fuck this shit is. Sweet Valley motherfucking high. You know, the last time I checked, aren't these women around my mama age, or around my cousins that's around my mama age, you know, aren't they in their fucking 40s? When has it ever been okay for bitches in their 40s to, to say, well, I'm not going to be your friend no more because you friends with her? Like, who does that? The last time I checked, if you grown... You can be friends with whatever motherfucker you want to be motherfucking friends with. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really get it. And in some ways, I'm trying to understand certain people's parts in this motherfucking shit. But at the end of the day, a bitch is a bitch. And if I see a bitch being a fucking bitch to the, to the, to the motherfucking core, then I'm going to call this shit out. I ain't got no motherfucking problem with that. After watching this episode twice since I've been off of work, twice, I have come to the conclusion that Miss... Nenlithia Leaks, aka Neanderthal Leaks, as Justin J would call her, aka Nigga Nathan Leaks, as what Kelly Kimball would call that bitch. She is out of her fucking mind. This bitch head is bigger than that grapefruit nose of hers. Like, honestly, I cannot stand her. And she's a big fat hypocrite, literally. Like, she's a real hypocrite. She's always the type of bitch to always want to preach to somebody about how you're supposed to be a friend and what a real friendship is. And the last time I checked, bitch, you ain't no real friend to anybody. Honestly. You wasn't a real friend to Kim and you really not no friend to Cynthia. And you showed that when you was on The View the other day. So, really, what gives, bitch? Like, who the fuck you supposed to be? Who the fuck do you think you are for a motherfucker to bow down to your ass? You really take that queen, queen B shit to the motherfucking core. Because the Last time I checked, bitch, you ain't got no crown. You on the motherfucking reality show. And you think you above these bitches. You on the same show as these bitches. I'm until you get to the level that Bethany has been on. Or other motherfuckers that have took their motherfucking reality careers to another level. Then that's, then that's when you can call yourself a queen. Because you ain't got no job no more. The only job that you do got is the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So, bitch, bow down. Bitch, calm down. You know what I'm saying? But that big ass nose of yours, with that fat ass overweight nose of yours, sit the fuck down, bitch. For real. And then you want to sit your ass down with that platinum toupee and talk to Greg about the charity being talking about you felt bullied. Bitch, you ain't fit. Bitch, you was not being bullied. The most you could have did was sit up there and came in and showed yourself in the, in the correct light because you should have known that you was getting your ass set up because honestly y'all I can't stand Kenya more worth a damn but that was a genius ass plot to make that bitch look stupid that's exactly what the fuck she did she set your clown ass up to act like a clown and what did you do when she set your ass up act like a fucking clown just like she anticipated your ass to act like a fucking clown like the clown that you fucking look like that's the type of shit I'm saying you want to say you felt bully bitch at the end of the day you shouldn't have came if you felt so strong about it. I don't give a fuck if Cynthia was in your ear telling you to come or not. Bitch, you shouldn't have came. And that's just the motherfucking bottom line. Like, bitch, really? Like, I don't even see why you think it was okay for you to, to act the way you did. Like, you acted like a spoiled motherfucking brat at the end of the day. Like, you really did. And there is there is nothing that you can say to make yourself look better. It's, really, it's, it's, it's not. To be honest, it's really not. And at the end of the day, you wrong. You know, K Kenya did kind of man manipulate the fucking situation when she decided to um, ask you to come because she knew that she had an agenda from the very beginning, which I do agree with. But the way you acted made you look worse off. Yes, Kenya had an agenda. Her agenda was to make your ass look like a damn fool. And that's exactly how the fuck you look like a fucking fool. And you allowed her to manipulate, man not manipulate, what my friend says, manipulate dip your ass. And you look like a damn fool. And you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself for looking like a damn fool when you want to say you was bullied. Stop being overly dramatic about the situation. That at the end of the day, you acted like a clown. And then you went off on Peter talking about he was being a queen and being a bitch. And when you're the one that stepped to him talking about what the fuck he was talking about. Bitch, how the fuck he was being a bitch when you approached him about what the fuck he said? Bitch, sit the fuck down. Then Cynthia ass talking to Mallory about the charity event. Talking about how she felt like Nene was wrong. And of course, you would never say that to Nene's face because your head is all up her ass. I think you eat her ass so motherfucking good. That's why Nene keeps your ass around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even get Cynthia. She ain't got no motherfucking backbone. The way she be trying to have a backbone with motherfuckers like Ken. She need it while she be trying to talk. 
Just like when they was at that um, event with that pillow talk shit while she was trying to talk in sign language with, with Candy. Where were you? Where was your sign language talking your horse radish face ass bitch when Nene was trying to talk about your fucking parenting and talk about how how uh, basically insinuating that you don't know what the fuck you're doing and raise your motherfucking daughter. Where was your sign language then, bitch? But you would never use your sign language with Nene because your ass skin of a big rocking and bow wrinkle looking ass bitch. Like, sit the fuck down. You're talking to Mallory about it. You're scared you lost your friendship. I mean, bitch, go eat Nene's ass out some more and then she'll, you know what I'm saying? Once you eat that ass real good, like you've been eating her ass out real good, then she'll be your friend again. You know what I'm saying? Then she'll let you know what the business is because you've been eating her ass out for the past three to four years. Is. Keep eating that bitch ass out, then you're gonna to continue to maintain your friendship. Alright, bitch. So anyway, Kenya discusses the charity event, the charity event with Marlo and Kenya, baby. Let me just tell you something. At the end of the day, that charity event was not to be kind in a sense. You did that because you used Nene's name to lure all the motherfucking people there just so you can have you a crowd because it's Nene Leaks and you knew what the fuck you were doing. And then on top of that, not only did you use her name and say that you're honoring her, you also invited her and said that you were honoring her just to see how she would act. You had some, you had some sneaky ass intentions behind that. And I would say that was pretty genius of you to, to set that bitch up for the kill because that's what you did. You were saying, okay, let me just have a charity event and put it in this bitch name. Invite all these people. Say I'm honoring this bitch and see how the fuck she gonna cut up an act a damn clown. And voila! That's what the fuck she did and now everybody is shitting on Nene for all the shit that I've been saying. Season 4. I had one subscriber that was a huge fan. I wouldn't say a huge fan, but one of one of my huge supporters. And he got motherfucking pissed off. We was arguing back and forth during season four all the time about how I was going in on Nene back in season four when she started being an uppity ass bitch. And at the end of the day, everybody is seeing what the fuck I've been saying for the last three years. That bitch is an uppity ass bitch. She let Celebrity Apprentice blow her head up. Then when she started getting all these guest gigs on, let's stay together, Glee, and got on a new normal. That bitch really thought that she was on top of the world. Bitch, you're not. You're just not starting, bitch. I mean, it's okay to be happy and be confident about your success because you have started from the bottom and now you're at the top. You know what I'm saying? You did start from the motherfucking bottom. But at the end of the day, bitch, you are not where you, where you probably... You know, aspire to be. Just like me, just the J and Adrian expressions. Most of the people that watch the three of us, they all watch us. You know what I'm saying? Adrian fans probably watch me. My fans watch him. Justin's fans watch me. My fans watch Justin. My fans watch Justin. Justin fans watch me. It's all the motherfucking sign. You know, the three of us together is, is just a, a match made in motherfucking heaven. A bond made in heaven. The three of us love each other. We're going to do some shit in the future. We're not exactly at the height of where we want to be at. We're just starting. But you don't see us getting no motherfucking big heads. For what? Our ass is still sitting up here on YouTube. So until we get us a show on a major network or a radio show on a major motherfucking radio station where we can sit together and, and and throw shade at these celebrities and do whatever the fuck we want to and interview celebrities and shit. Then that's when we can get us ourselves a big head. But until then, we're sitting our ass on YouTube as a motherfucking platform to go into bigger places. And that's all the fuck we doing. Ain't no point of us getting no motherfucking big head because we we are starting from the bottom. We still kind of there, but we rising to the motherfucking top. So Nene, sit your motherfucking ass down, okay? Just sit the fuck down. And it's just it's just ignorant to me how. You know how stupid your ass is. So we get to Peter's surprise party. And then you know Cynthia, Portia, and Candy talk about Candy's event. And um, Candy was surprised that Cynthia and Nene wasn't really speaking ever since the event or whatever. And she, that she was hoping that Nene came. And they were all talking about it. And then that's when um, Nene and Peter, you know, talked at Peter's surprise party. They didn't really make peace, but they were able to be cordial for the sake of Peter's party. Nene still was feeling some type of way about what happened at the charity event, which I felt like she shouldn't because she's the bitch that started it all just like she started the shit at the damn pajama party. But what do I know? I wasn't there right. So, Kenya decides that she want to confront Nene. And she wants to apologize for making Nene feel some type of way or whatever. And she wants to hug Nene and, you know... Do whatever. And if I did, if, if is it just me or when Nene came to Peter's surprise party, she hugged everybody but Kenya and Marlo. Like she was throwing shade at Marlo from the very beginning. And I really do feel like 
Kenya and Marlo was really kissing Nene's ass at this fucking party. Like, they was all up her ass. And this is what pissed me off of Kenya. As much as I don't like her, I feel like besides Candy, she's the only bitch that would give Nene what the fuck she asking for. But she's not giving it to me right now because she too busy trying to make things right and kissing her motherfucking ass. It was very disgusting to see how far up Nene's ass that Kenya and Marlo was. Like, oh, I'll get you a drink or Marlo trying to hold conversation. Then the ultimate shade was when Nene decided to sit next to Candy, a bitch that she really don't fuck with like that, as opposed to sitting next to Marlo. Even Marlo felt that fucking shade. And I just didn't quite understand why Nene was being so shady. Like, I don't see what the big deal is, you know what I'm saying? Like, Nene and Kenya's friendship, they were going through an issue, but at the end of the day, it, in my opinion, that issue wasn't that fucking big to the point where they didn't need to be friends no more. Like, I don't think that it should have been that big of a deal. Like, there should have been a situation where they agreed to disagree. Like, Nene is so fucking big-headed and big-nosed to the point where she feels like a bitch need to bow down to her and say, I, I apologize every time somebody do something. When she never says she apologize for what the fuck she say because that's my opinion. I can say whatever I want to say because that's my opinion. But when somebody says their opinion, she expects a fucking apology every motherfucking time. Bitch, the world don't turn that way, bitch. It really doesn't turn that way. Give others what the fuck you want people to give back to you. Give people what you want to receive back. That's all the fuck I'm saying, you grapefruit nose ass bitch. You pear nose ass bitch. I'm sick of you and your bullshit. For real. Because this whole blow up between you and Kenya really isn't that serious. I can see if you and Kenya were arch enemies at this point. But y'all really wasn't. Y'all just had a situation where Nene is mad with you right now. And it just hasn't really been... You know, the book, the, the the wound hasn't really been patched yet. And Nene is the one who introduced Marlo to you. So who's to say that after y'all met at the venue, y'all didn't really, you know, start hanging out or whatever and start creating a relationship or just started hanging out? I don't really see nothing wrong with that. Now, in hindsight, if Nene and Kenya was really at each other's throats, which they really aren't right now, as we watch this, at each other's throats, like... You know, like talking about, I could understand why Nene would feel some type of way if Marlo was talking to the bitch or speaking to the bitch. You know what I'm saying? Because, bitch, I'm having an issue with her. What the fuck are you talking to her like that for when you know that me and her are beefing with each other? But then at the same time, you can't tell a grown-ass person who the fuck they can be friends with at the end of the day. You can't tell nobody who the fuck they can, they can and can't be friends with. It's a certain, but there is certain lines and certain boundaries that you don't need to cross. If you're going to be cool with a bitch that your friend don't like, you need to steer clear of the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I'm cool with people that my friends don't particularly care for. Like, because I'm cool with a lot of folks. So I can't help that you and said person don't like each other. Like, as of right now, I got two friends that don't like each other right now. I've been friends with them all my motherfucking life. And I fucks with the both of them. I don't mention this bitch name when I'm around that bitch. And I don't mention that bitch name when I'm around the other bitch. That's just how the world turns. So, Nene was being so irritated by Kenya and Marlo's closeness. I felt like if Nene and Kenya were the friends that they tried to proclaim they was for all this time, then maybe we should have seen Kenya, maybe we should have seen Nene and Marlo talk about the situation. But Nene was acting like a spoiled ass brat, like they a fucking sweet valley house somewhere. This is not high school, bitch. You in your motherfucking 40s, mid to late 40s to be exact. If you got an issue with your motherfucking friend, pull your friend aside and tell them about it. You sitting up here throwing shade at this bitch and she don't even know why you throwing shade at her. Why? Because you being a childish ass bitch and not stepping up to the motherfucking plate. If you the real bitch like you said you was, you would have came and confronted that shit and talked to your friend about it. But yeah, you telling everybody else how you feel about Kenya and Marlo being friends, but Marlo. Fuck Kenya at this point because at this point you feel like Kenya ain't your friend, but Marlo was supposed to be your road down. She was your bridemaid, bitch. Yes, I said it. Bridemaid, bitch. She was your fucking bridemaid, bitch. So at the end of the day, you should have put her to the side and talked to her about it, but she was being a bitch. Then we get to the Bailey Bowl. And I must say that it was, it, you know, it started out fun, but then Nene didn't even invite Marlo to the motherfucking Bailey Bowl to be on her team. So that was one thing that made Marlo upset. Then she ends up being on Kenya's team. Now, I felt like that was some bullshit for Nene not to even invite 
Marlo. Like, Marlo don't even know why you're not inviting her. Marlo don't know why you being a bitch. She got a clue, but you're supposed to be a real bitch, but you ain't even telling her what the fuck you upset about. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, when they went outside, Marlo was still kissing Nene's ass, trying to hug her, and Nene's like, go on, girl, fuck that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Marlo was looking like she was about to cry when she was talking to my girl Alexis about it, and then Kenya pulled her over so she could talk to Nene, and then Nene just pushed Kenya off of her and started being like a rude, nasty-ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, get the fuck out of my face. Tell me some don't ever motherfucking try me like that. What you mean try you? Then Kenya was pulling y'all to the side so y'all can fucking talk about it. I don't think that Nene. Now at this point, I really don't think that Kenya was being messy. I don't think that she had malicious intent when she pulled Marlo over there to talk to Nene. Because at the end of the day, it did seem like Marlo was a bit bothered by how Nene was treating her, and Nene was treating her like shit. And Marlo really didn't understand that. If you got a problem with the fact that she friends with this bitch, then you need to say that shit. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't no real bitch though. Like you really not. But you claim that you are. You know what I mean? So Marlo goes in on Nene. Talked about her Donald Trump wig and all this shit. Like she straight up went ham on Nene. Nene walked away through a water bottle at her. And then she got in her truck and left. Marlo stayed with Kenya and she was crying. And for the first time in all the four, no, three years that we've been knowing Marlo Hampton on Bravo. I feel bad for her. I honestly feel bad for her because I felt like she really did look at Nene as her big sister. I really do feel like she really loved Nene as her friend. And now all of a sudden she's an opportunist because she's friends with Kenya. And I just don't think that that's cool and I don't think that's a correct way to say that. So I'm all about team fuck Nene Leaks at the end of the day. This bitch is really... She got the ego the size of her fucking nose. And her nose is huge as a motherfucker. Like... This, I mean, honestly, her nose is shaped just like this motherfucking lotion. That is exactly how her nose is shaped. Like, this bitch really needs to sit her motherfucking ass down and get a clue. Like, this bitch thinks she better than everybody. She thinks she can control everybody. She thinks she got puppets and she don't. Bitch, you're not your pedo. Sit the fuck down somewhere and get a grip. You a grown ass woman in your fucking 40s. Start acting like it and stop acting like a, a self-entitled ass bitch. Because you said that Sheree felt like she was entitled to everything. You think you're entitled to everything. You think you're entitled to being the only bitch on the show with money, having a career, and having friends. This is why it, this is why America is starting to turn on your ass. Because the shit that I've been seeing for the last three seasons is the shit that motherfuckers just now seen. And I'm glad they seen it. So fuck you, Nene. Because I'm sick of your ass. We didn't see much of Phaedra and Apollo, which I don't give a fuck because they so boring this season. At this point, I'm starting to be on Kenya's side, to be quite honest. Y'all know I don't like that bitch, but I'm starting to be on her side because Nene is an asshole. Cynthia likes to lick her asshole. Mama was licking her asshole, too. I don't understand why everybody feel like they got the bow down to Nene. That bitch ain't got no clout. You know what I'm saying? She ain't got shit. This is the only thing she got right now. So, fuck Nene. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish these motherfuckers would stand firm to Nene. Stand up to this bitch. The only person that has done it so far is Candy. As of right now, Kenya is just starting to fire back with that bitch. And Marlo had that bitch walking away. Just like Sheree had that bitch walking away. And I wish Sheree was on this motherfucking show to bring that bitch down. For real. Because somebody to bring Nene ass back down to earth. She need to re she need to go back and watch the first season when she had that ugly ass juicy fruit ass wig that she was wearing with them chiclet with them chiclet ass teeth that she had the first season. With them saggy ass titties, them sleepy ass exhausted hibernation ass titties that she had. She really need to understand this shit. She need to not forget where the fuck she came from. That's what she need to do. Cause I remember her when she was a broke bitch with some rotten ass teeth with that damn juicy fruit ass wig she had on her head. That's all I'm saying. But at the end of the day this is my Real Housewives of Atlanta review. Make sure y'all follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Still Standing, Rebellious Underscore Scotty on Instagram, and Team Scotty for my Facebook fan page. Just type in Team Scotty and it'll pop up and just like it. Be sure to check out reviews on Real Housewives of Atlanta from Sayshawn Bradley, Justin J1232, Miss PTV, um, Bounty Blue, and Ashley Shy Miller, and much love from KY. I think those are the ones that already got their reviews up right now as we speak, and I got the catch up on theirs right now. So be sure to watch them, and I'm out of here, y'all, till my Basketball Wives LA review. I'm out of here. Peace.